MVP. And welcome to another episode of Shrine Your Passions with your host, the one, the only, Dominic Mason. And today we have a very special guest next to me. We have Mr. Overlord, David Garrels. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dom. It's a pleasure being on. Absolutely. And David, what do you do here at Shriner? Oh, well, <laughs> what do I not do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the jokes our students say. Uh, no, nah, but I, uh, there's a lot that I get to do on campus. I'm blessed to be able to be the director of student activities and esports and Greek life. So that's a lot of fun. There's three completely different <laughs> worlds, uh, yeah. I guess you could say, clash together. Uh, but the thing that really ties them all together is uh, leadership development um, and then also being able to work with students. Um, and so that's, that's quite a lot of fun. Uh, through that, we do a lot of programming. We do a lot of um, uh, gaming, which is super cool. Oh, yeah. uh, and then, uh, you know, I guess uh, leading the next generation uh, or preparing the next generation to take over um, for the university. So it's a lot of fun. It's a great mm-hmm. honor to do that job. And I really, I really I have a lot of fun doing it. Oh, I also get to help with orientation, too. So That's true. Uh, being a uh, Supreme Overlord for the Moody Tribe. Yes, indeed. <laughs> The phoenixes, <laughs> <laughs> but even still, you, you always go a little bit over the top, and it's that's one of my favorite qualities about you is that you got you don't just it's like you and Matt don't settle. Y'all always like to take it to the next level. Like even with uh, <laughs> for my senior year when we did uh, the greatest show as our intro yeah, for the not near mentors. Y'all had so much fun doing that. You with the lights, yeah. us with all the choreography. God. that was an intense ride well i say it's something that's uh it goes back to you know a quote that you know dr Huber and dr Cooper were using before i i got here and i obviously kind of believe the same thing but it's it's what's the difference it's from megamind what's the difference between uh a, 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 villain, a villain and a, and a super, super villain, villain. presentation <laughs> right <laughs> and so we're all about that and that's kind of the theme of our whole entire office mm-hmm. so i think it that's what makes it more fun Alrighty. Well, speaking of presentation, mm-hmm. I'm bringing you on for a passion that you love. Uh, your passion for movies. How did that start? Sweet. Uh, yeah. Um, always loved movies, right? Movies, film, gaming, those types of things. But for me, uh, watching a movie, um, it's it's kind of always your escape from the world that you live in, right? Right. So uh, you know, I like being David. David's super cool. Uh, okay. I like who I am, uh, and I've always liked the places that I live. But what if David could go on an adventure somewhere, right? What if I was on a ship, uh, you know, and swashbuckling with, with pirates or whatever? Or what if I was, uh, you know, this muscled up beefy barbarian, right, you know, mm-hmm. uh, crashing through the walls and, you know, uh, being, you know, super strong or whatever, or a, a superhero or a doctor, um, those types of things. And so for me, for me, movies was always like an escape from the real world a little bit, so kind of like a cathartic psychology i guess you could say right um and so i've always enjoyed that i, I find a lot of times when i watch films um i, I really well, like i really watch films right. so you know when someone's uh, running out of air because they're drowned in right in a movie like oh, leviathan or you start or, to feel in your yeah chest. you know uh i'm like oh my gosh oh my god I, st- I literally stop breathing and then i'm like oh I'm, i can breathe i'm not in the water this is totally fine i'm not in the water <laughs> Or if someone, you know, is getting, you know, someone uh, goes through, like, uh, a lots of emotion, right, uh, and, and they're crying at the end of the film. I found myself crying at the end of the film. Mm-hmm. And my earliest memory of that was Karate Kid, when he finally won. People mm-hmm. were like, really? And the free swing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just me and Daniel, you know, and fighting Johnny. And that mm-hmm. was, you know, I helped him win. That's, so I've always seen movies like that. as an interactive type of a thing for me. Awesome, awesome. So with your love and passion for movies i'm really surprised that you didn't try to go like the hollywood route and go into production or direction or anything like that what's that i mean not that i didn't want to uh you know but um i think a lot of times there's a couple of factors that play into that one growing up in a really small town uh it's it's tough to to try to do that type of thing because there's not really the environment either you know that we have today with with facebook and social media uh youtube and how, how relatively cheap equipment is for you to be able to get now that can do high quality stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't have that, you know, when I was growing up. You know, to find a video camera, I mean, you were, <laughs> you were somebody rich on the block. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> and they were like this big and came out of briefcase, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, didn't, the opportunity wasn't there like it is today, one thing. But two, I also uh, kind of like when I was a child or uh, a young, you know, younger teenager, you know, mm-hmm. early 20s, uh, very. 
extrinsic motivated type of a person. So people's thoughts yeah. about me or whatever made me nervous to do certain things. Man, um, can I relate? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess in the last uh, little bit, um, I, I've I, you know I've tried to come over overcome that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, well, I mean, some of my movie producing career it's very short. Uh, mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I did uh, I did two shows right. Um, uh, produced uh, a movie where. Um, Anakin Skywalker took on all the Jedi's, um, and then also another one where um, uh, Heavy Duty is a GI Joe guy, right? Mm. Fought Snake Eyes, um, and that is uh, that was definitely um, oh the Hulk was involved in that one, so that was cross platform. But that was all action figures, right? And oh it was uh, stop motion, of course. And they're uh, both very short and very horrible with no sound. So <laughs> yeah, oh well, <laughs> it's like with the silent films, man. That's why it's the talkies now. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, it's as far as I've ever gone. Um, I mean, lately production has been able to, I'm I mean, something I'm, I'm able to learn, uh, making these shows that we're doing. Uh, right. and then I, I threw myself out on karaoke, uh, to, uh, for episode one of Shriner Live. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's where I went there. So I was the kind of guy that would settle more for the sound booth and light booth in mm-hmm. theater than the stage. Um, mm-hmm. just because of, I was always so nervous about getting in front of people. I understand. So I know that you you watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of movies, You've yeah. You've seen <clears throat> a myriad of movies, many more than me. <laughs> but I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to name, let's go with five. Let's go with your top five movies, the ones that you just wouldn't get tired of. And if you, could, if you eternally had to watch five movies for the rest of your days, which five would it be? Only five movies, back to back five. to back to back. Okay. All right, first one's easy, right? Uh-huh. I could cheat and say any Star Wars film because, uh, you know, that's everybody Everybody knows that about me. I'm a slight Star Wars fan. But um, I'm only going to pick one from uh, <laughs> from that uh, legacy there, and I'm going to go with Empire Strikes Back, mm. episode five. Uh, probably my most favorite movie in the world. I can watch it all the time. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I, th- I think the reason I like that one so much is um, the plot twist. Uh, at the uh, right, I guess right there in the yeah. middle of that film, you know, or I guess close to the end, mm-hmm. right when uh, you know Luke Skywalker's finally got enough courage to go fight Darth Vader, and he's not scared of him at all, but he's he's getting his you know he's getting whooped, mm-hmm. and he finally gets beat down a little bit, you know, cuts his hand off or whatever, yep. and he's at his weakest moment ever. And that's when the baddest dude in the galaxy drops it on you. Oh, yeah, I'm your dad, by the way. Um, and I was like, Obi-Wan, you liar. You know, <laughs> I was okay. in the same boat. <laughs> but in that same regard, he just cut off his son's own hand. That's, I, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a, that's a, um, I guess a plot twist that's lost on the current generation, right? Uh, right? You go back and watch those films, everybody knows that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's dad. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, that was probably... The most cool moment I remember in in watching a film, the revelation, even as a kid, I was like, wow, I've hated this guy for so long and liked this guy for so long, right? Because there was a long time in between those two films because of the technology of the day. But, you know, you've been hating Darth Vader for so long because he's such a bad guy or he's choking everybody, he's mean. And all of a sudden you find out he's related to... You know, the one guy you've been cheering for the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so it was, it was pretty shocking. Oh, yeah. That's definitely number one. Uh, number two, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, the movie Alien. Oh, yeah. So good. Such so a great good. film. Uh, man, and it actually came out right about the same time. So I like those 70s mm-hmm. movies, maybe because I was born in 77 along with uh, Star Wars. But, uh, man, Alien was unbelievable uh, when I first saw that. And the, the coolest part about what Ridley Scott did there was you never – really saw the xenomorph mm-hmm. um until like right when someone was dying right yep. I mean, exactly he's so good about making that that tense pressure you know mm-hmm. uh and making the camera angles or whatever um uh, reveal the monster and make it scary so that was pretty good um what am i on number three i'm on yeah, number three number, number three is the labyrinth um That's very good you know oh the labyrinth God. right I'm not that what <laughs> <laughs> yes i know the I'm labyrinth just do you guys know the labyrinth okay just checking out there. If you don't, comment uh, down below if you do. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, it's a great show um, uh, about a a young girl who's uh, kind of caught up in the fantasy world. So I kind of related to that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. uh, wanting to be like a, she's wanting to be the princess. I always want to be a barbarian. Right. I always be Conan. Um, and uh, she gets stuck babysitting her, 
her little brother. He's whiny because he's a kid. He's a baby. That's what they do. They whine a lot and they cry if they're not happy. Uh, and she gets mad. And she says, take this baby away from me. And all of a sudden, who shows up? David <laughs> Bowie the Goblin King. That's all right. So that was super good. And then the rest is her adventure trying to get her get her brother back. She realized she made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Cool zany characters in there. And so it was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, and then uh, number four, uh, number four movie, if I had to watch all the time, what would I watch? Um, I'd probably say uh, Demolition Man. Um, that's a, uh, that's that was my first time to ever see Sandra Bullock in a film. Mm. That's also, I think, Benjamin Bratt's first film ever he, he ever made, too. And mm. they also co-star in uh, Miss Congeniality, not too much after hey, that, right? That's a but, really uh, good movie. <laughs> that's a good movie. <laughs> <show. laughs> But your but your main hero, uh, right, with Sylvester Stallone and uh, and um, uh, Wesley Snipes plays an amazing villain, right, uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Simon Phoenix, and uh, it was really a lot kind of like in the world that I kind of see us going towards in the future, right, where we're, we're we just can't do anything that offends anyone or, or eat salt or have contact sports, you know. <laughs> in the film, it was kind of relatable. Um, we actually tricked my English teacher one time and uh, let us watch that movie in class. Because uh, it, we told her it was like a remake of a Brave New World. <laughs> we were reading that book, just because Wesley Snipes says it's a Brave New World, right? Um, <laughs> so that one's really oh good. Gosh. And then um, I guess the last one, uh, I'm, I'm about to pick, pick a Chris Tucker movie, so mm-hmm. um, it's probably going to be uh, The Fifth Element. So I, I like that one a lot too. That one's really good. That's probably my top five. Okay. So now I'm gonna put you on the spot here mm-hmm. a little bit. You've seen so many movies, and you've probably picked up a few tips yourself. Okay. But now I'm going to put you on the challenge in if you had no bar on budget, no bar on actors. Yeah. Would you do a remake of a film or a brand new film? And who would you hire? What would you do? Well, the first part of that question is simple, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of remakes. Um, Because most of the time, a film that, that made it, made it for a reason. Exactly. Right. That's why um, when you look at things like, um, you know, The Clash of the Titans or, yep. yeah, a great film, <laughs> or uh, Conan the Barbarian, right, which is a, a film I like. They did a remake of um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka. I oh, can't yeah. remember which one comes first now. but And the remakes were great. Don't get me wrong. They were fine. Um, but there's a reason that those first movies were hits. Exactly. Like, you take Clash of the Titans, and I know that by today's uh, CGI standards and, and those types of things that the effects were rudimentary but the storyline was so good and even for those times i mean when medusa comes crawling out there goes sna- you could tell it's fake but <laughs> absolutely it was unbelievably <laughs> cool you know you didn't see anything like that back mm-hmm. in those days ray harry housing was um, was was amazing on his special effects mm-hmm. um so that part yeah uh, i wouldn't i try not to remake a film but the actor's part i think what i would go with is uh i'm, I'm going to put um Hands down, I'm putting Samuel Jackson in my film. So <laughs> he's the first guy I'm going to cast. Um, and uh, so I'd like to see him, though, in a film, probably a comedy, right? Because um, mm-hmm. I like his comedy. Um, but I want to see him act alongside of Kevin Hart and Chris Tucker. Okay. Because I think that would be funny. Watching all three of them, and then throw Wanda Sykes oh in there because uh, I like, I like oh my God. <laughs> everything she does. Um, and then I need to put like like a younger actor in there, you know, with all those guys. So I was thinking, so. maybe the uh, maybe that dude that plays McLovin from Superbad. <laughs> oh my god! I think that would be great, right? Oh my, what what is that? I can't remember the actor's name. I, don't, I have no clue. He was oh also uh, in some other movie with um, uh, Sean William Scott and mm-hmm. uh, Ant Man. I can't think of Ant-Man's name right now. She's, once you're in a Marvel film, that's who you are to me. Right. Uh, so it was in there with Ant-Man and uh, at the end of the show, um, Role Models, that's what it was. Oh, my gosh. At the end, they had to do like a live action role play and I'll dress as Kiss. Yeah, that's right. So maybe, oh, maybe we'd re- really make that, those live action role play series mm-hmm. with those people in it instead. Wow. Right? And so uh, Wanda Sykes is the love interest for McLovin, mm-hmm. right? Because he reenacts this thing and then his supporting cast are... Uh, the other three. <laughs> oh my god! Probably wouldn't be suitable for, for kids though. Sam uh, Jackson. Probably not. Are you like what? <clears throat> PG thirteen or R? Yeah, I mean he's probably. I mean his quotes are probably the most easy quotes to memorize because you know they're they're interesting. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but that's my whole brain. You know, it's just, it's quotes and uh, and dad jokes and so. <laughs> that's really, that's the film I'd probably make. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, David. I really appreciate yep. you being here. All right, everyone. Uh, this has been Mr. David. <laughs> sorry. Overlord, Mr. Hey. David Garrels for yeah. the Moody Tribe. Mm -hmm. And I am your host, Dominic Mason. And this has been Shrine Passions. If no one's told you they love you today, we do. See you next week.